Welcome to College Algebra. By the end of this video, you should know what integers are, natural numbers, whole numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers. You should also be able to identify whether a number is greater or less than another number and the symbol associated with it. So there are two questions here at the end of the video. You should be able to come back and answer those. Put your answers in the comments below and a solution video will be posted 24 hours after this video goes up. So if you're watching it in the future, it's probably already there. All right, so we're starting off with all the different number systems. So you're familiar with favorite numbers like three, seven, zero, negative 16, e, pi, and possibly more. So numbers are categorized into different groups or sets of numbers. So the first set, which is the smallest set, is called the set of natural numbers. So the set of natural numbers includes the countable whole numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up, continuing on infinitely. So this is starting from 1. The whole numbers is the next largest set, and the whole numbers is just the natural numbers with 0. So the whole numbers start at 0, and they continue on 1, 2, 3, and so on. And these are all whole numbers. So there's no fractions here, no decimal points, just whole numbers. Now, I should mention that some texts consider the natural numbers to start at zero. This is not a set convention or not. So some people choose the natural numbers to start at one, others at zero, but in most pre-calculus or college algebra texts, you'll find that the natural numbers tend to start at one and whole numbers start at zero. Okay, integers are all the countable numbers, so whole numbers and natural numbers, but it includes the negative numbers as well. So it starts from, say, like negative infinity, and it includes negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, includes the whole number 0, and then goes on to include all of your natural numbers. So these are essentially all the numbers out there that do not have a decimal point. Okay. Now, the rational numbers is where we start to add in our fractions or our decimal points there. So rational numbers, and you'll have to excuse me for this notation because this is slightly new notation for most people watching an intro video, but I'll explain this. Uh, you can have two numbers, say a and b, and the condition for a and b is that uh, a and b are integers. So this means that you can take any two integers and you can put one integer on top of the other as long as b is not equal to zero because you cannot have a fraction with a zero in the denominator. Uh, but this just gives us our set of all fractions. So uh, we could write this as, say, uh, one over one is a rational number, or two is a rational number, or one over three is a rational number, and so on. So there are many, many rational numbers. Irrational numbers are just a set of numbers that are not rational. So at this point, it might be a little bit difficult to identify them, uh, but you have some typical irrational numbers that we talk about, such as e and pi. And what makes these irrational is that even though they have decimal points, they cannot be written as fractions. So they cannot be written as fractions, which means that when you do their decimal point conversion for, say, pi, you have a thing like 3.14159, and so on, but there's no set pattern. So if there's no set pattern when you write out the decimal points, you have an irrational number. If there is a set pattern, say if we have uh, 2.178, 178, 178, and that 178 continues to repeat, then that means that that is a rational number because it has a repeating pattern. So if it repeats, it is rational. Use a Q to denote the rational numbers. If it does not repeat, then it is irrational. Some, some books will use a Q with a little uh, prime symbol after it or a complement symbol to mean things that are not in Q, but I will use I. Okay, so visually, what does this look like? Because the numbers are contained within other sets, so natural numbers are contained in the whole numbers, 
shown here, whole numbers are contained within the integers and integers are contained within the rational numbers, we do have some embedding. Now, irrational numbers are separate from all of those. So there's no such thing as an irrational natural number, no such thing as an irrational whole number, there's no such thing as an irrational integer, and there's certainly no such thing as an irrational rational number. Okay, so why do I show you this? Well, I show you this because all of these numbers in, uh, together are called the real number. And you don't really want to think as real being something that exists in the real world. It's not that type of real. Uh, you can think of it more as like a one-dimensional number. So when you write the number itself, you're just writing one thing down. You're not writing a pair. You're not writing some sort of expression. You're just writing a single number. And when you learn about complex numbers later, that just means you have a two-dimensional number. And that can be explained a little bit later. It's a little bit more complicated, uh, but that's how you should think of the term real. Okay, so I wanna go through some of the numbers here, just some examples. Uh, so when you have rational numbers, rational numbers can be integers, they can be whole numbers, they can be natural numbers, uh, but you also have fractions. So things like nine over two, as we saw there, and you might see this written as 4.5. Either way it's written, it's still a rational number. Uh, seven over four, See this written as say 1.75, still rational, it can be written as a decimal that either terminates or has a repeating pattern. And in the case of 13.616161 and so on, uh, we see this repeated pattern it can either be a 1.6 pattern or a 6.1 pattern, depending how you look on it, but it repeats. So it is a rational number because we can predict what the next numbers in the sequence. Irrational numbers though, something like pi, where if we have 3.14, 1592, there's no way to predict that the next number in line should be six. It's not obvious, there's no set pattern. If we multiply it by itself three times, it is still rational. If we take a number like e, uh, that is another irrational number. Many square roots of prime numbers are also irrational. So uh, square root of two is going to be irrational. The square root of 13 is going to be irrational. We take uh, another irrational number like pi, or e, and we raise it to a power, or take the square root of something, it will also be irrational. Okay. So, all of these numbers make up the real numbers. And like I said, these are one dimensional, which means that we can plot them on a line. They have an order. So, for instance, if I want to take the number uh, two, I put positive numbers to the right of zero. So you can think of this as zero, or you can think of this as the origin. Okay, if I have a number like negative seven, put negatives to the left of zero. And this gives us an order. So uh, in terms of left to right, it extends in both directions as far as we want, uh, but the numbers on the right are considered to be greater and the numbers on the left are lesser or lower or smaller numbers. I think smaller might be a better term for this. So we have some conventions here, because uh, if we have a number line and we have an order, we can compare numbers based on their order. So if we have two numbers, say A and B, and A is greater than B, then we write A is greater than B with the symbol. So uh, the side that opens up points to the larger number, or you can think of it as the arrowhead is pointing to the smaller number. So the smaller one's on the right, and the bigger one is on the left, however you want to remember that. Okay, so in the case above where we have two, zero, and negative seven, we could write that two is a greater number than negative seven, or we could write that even zero is a greater number than negative seven. How do we know this? Because if we take a look on our number line, zero is to the right of negative seven, two is to the right of negative seven. If we have a number a, that is less than B, we write A is less than B. So in this case, the point of our symbol is pointing to the smaller number, and the open gap on the right is pointing to the bigger number. So uh, in this case, we could have the negative seven is less than zero, or zero is less than two. Okay. Now, if A is equal to B, this is something that you probably already know, but we can mention it. 
uh, if a is equal to b, then we write a is equal to b with the equal sign. Now, with our real number line, what this usually means for us uh, is when we have a fraction and when we have a number in decimal form. So, for example, I could put this number up here and I can call this, uh, let's call this seven halves. Okay, so I have the number seven halves, and let's say I also have the number on this line that is 3.5. Now, uh, we know that 3.5 is exactly equal to seven halves. But if you make a fraction complicated enough, that might not be obvious right off the bat, so it is a uh, convention that we can use. So seven and a half is equal to 3.5 and it works with the number line. It fits in just with the less than and greater than symbol. Okay, so not too much going on in this video, but a good introduction to the basics of numbers before we get into the more complicated. So I have some questions for you. In addition to the questions at the beginning of the video, which you should now be able to answer, we're gonna go through these ones here and give the solutions here. So try to beat me if you can. Uh, which set, natural, whole, etc., does each number belong to? So. Is it a rational number? Is it irrational? Is it an integer? Is it a whole number? Is it a natural number? Well, let's see. We have 13.36262362. Okay, so we have a repeating pattern here, and this is denoted by the little line above. And this line means that those numbers repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. So the numbers after the decimal point are predictable, which means that this is a rational number. So we write this rational, this is q. And because it's a rational number, it is also an integer, sorry, it's, it's not an integer, it is not an integer, um, but if it could be something like 13, just 13, then it would be an integer and rational. But in this case, this is a rational number that is not an integer. Okay, what about zero? Well, zero is our whole number, right? whole number. This is w. Uh, the whole numbers start at zero in this case. But zero is also an integer. And it is also a rational number. So if we go back to the diagram here, and we take a look at zero. In fact, let's just uh, get rid of some of these arrows to take a little bit of that muddying off the screen here. Some of this up so we can see this a little bit more clearly. If we circle the zero here, the whole numbers are part of the integers, and the integers are part of the rational numbers. So if we have zero as a whole number, then for sure it's going to belong to the whole numbers, it's going to belong to the integers, and it's going to belong to the rational numbers. So that's sort of how that diagram works and can tell you what the pattern is. Now, let's see. 5.12345678910111213141514. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, so this pattern could be predictable. So we can assume that maybe 1, 6 is next, but we're not sure because it's not clear if there is a pattern or not. There's no indication to say that the next numbers are the next numbers. So this is an irrational number. So there's no fraction form here. We, we can't guarantee what the next numbers are, we're not sure, so this seems like a non-repeating, non-terminating fraction. So it is irrational. Okay, so that's some number organization, and now we're going to take a look at this conceptual question, and I want you to think about this using the number line. Let's actually draw a little number line here. Perfect. Okay, if we have three numbers, A, B, and C, and we know that a is less than b and b is less than c, does it follow that a is then less than c? So no matter what the numbers are, whether you're in the negatives or the positives, we can plot this. Okay, so we know a is less than b. So maybe let's draw that. Let's say, okay, a is less than b, so b is somewhere over here to the right. And we know that b is less than c, so c is somewhere over here. We diagram this. Uh, it is clear then that a is also less than c. Why? Because C is more to the right on the number line than A. So the answer to this is yes. You might be wondering, why would you ask this question? Isn't this obvious? And it might be obvious, but later in mathematics when you do proofs about this stuff to prove these relationships, um, some of these common sense things can kind of go out the window for a bit. So it's a good idea to understand visually with the number line, with the systems, with the definitions, why this works. So yeah, 
if number one is less than number two and number two is less than number three, then absolutely number one is going to be less than number three. All right, that's it for this video. The solutions to the questions at the very beginning, I'll post here, are going to be answered in a follow-up video tomorrow. But for now, post your answers down below and see if you're on the right track or not. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.